Cleaning and sanitation are essential in any food operation. As you know, cleaning removes dirt and debris, and sanitation is used to kill bacteria and other microorganisms that are invisible to the human eye. These activities are important because they prevent pest infestation, kill existing bacteria, reduce the potential for cross-contamination, and help increase the shelf life of your products. The chance of injury is less if there is no debris to slip or trip on, and most of us prefer to work in a pleasant, clean space. Monitoring of cleaning may just involve a visual inspection, but you need other techniques to verify that the area has been properly sanitized. We're going to concentrate on this in the module. Verification methods to check that sanitation is effective. The main areas of concern are food contact surfaces. There are a few methods for confirming sanitation. We'll look at a couple of them. Here we see Valerie using the most common method. She's swabbing a 10 by 10 centimeter area with a sterile swab. She then puts the swab into a tube with a diluent. It is then placed on petri film. In other words, it's spread on a film containing a medium that supports bacterial growth. You can also get sterile sponges to swab an area. They are usually used to determine if specific organisms are present. After swabbing, the sponge is placed in a sterile bag and sent to a testing laboratory such as Exova for extracting and culturing the microorganisms. One of the big advantages of sponges is that they get better surface contact than the swabs. Incubation allows the bacteria to grow into colonies that appear as small colored dots on the film. Different types of bacteria may appear as different colors. These are counted to give an estimation of the contamination levels. If you find that bacterial counts are beyond the acceptable level, and what is acceptable varies depending on the food being processed, then you need to determine if your cleaning and sanitizing procedures are adequate. Unfortunately, it takes time to obtain the results using standard plating techniques, so this data is used mainly for trending. If you find that your total plate counts are high on a continuing basis, then it's a good idea to obtain some plates with media that promotes more selective growth, for example, for Listeria or for Salmonella, depending on your products. This will help you identify what's causing the problem. Otherwise, stick to a wide-spectrum growth media, such as aerobic plate count agar, which is most commonly used. While this method is easy to do, the downside is that it takes 24 to 48 hours to culture your films or plates and get the results. There is another method you can use to get a quick read of a surface. It's called luminometry and it requires the use of a specialized piece of equipment called an ATP tester. ATP is adenosine triphosphate and it's present in all animal, vegetable, bacteria, yeast, and mold cells. The ATP tester can be used to give a quick read of the amount of cellular material in an area, which is a good clue to how sanitary that area is. If the numbers are high, you can have the area re-sanitized before production begins. This testing just gives you an idea of the cleanliness of the surface, not what particular microorganisms are present. Baseline studies need to be done in combination with microbiological testing to determine the acceptable range for your situation. Regardless of the method you use to check sanitation, you have to take corrective actions if readings or counts are too high. It is important to monitor personnel involved in cleaning and sanitation, to ensure they follow procedures, and to re-examine those procedures on a regular basis to ensure high standards are met. To recap, in this module, you've learned why cleaning and sanitation are so important, how to monitor surfaces to make sure that they have been properly sanitized using both common swabbing and plating methods and by using ATP testing equipment, and you've learned the importance of continually evaluating procedures and evaluating staff. If you would like to test your understanding about monitoring your sanitation activities, 
take the test below. Don't worry, you can review the module and repeat the quiz if you need to. To receive a certificate of completion, you'll need to complete the quizzes for all the modules in this series. Good luck! See you in the next module.